We have great news for the city this morning. An unprecedented investment to transform some of New York City's eyesores into parks and recreational spaces. It's being announced today. Yeah, the city won a $117 million federal grant. And here to tell us where the money will go is the Deputy Mayor of Operations, Mira Joshi. So great to see you, Deputy Mayor. Great Thanks for coming in. Great to see you. So this was big news, right? And, and before anybody asks why the money's not being used for things like affordable housing or to improve the city's infrastructure, the migrant crisis, so on and so forth, there's so many places people are looking for money. This grant was specific for land use and parks, right? Well, it's actually a part of the bipartisan infrastructure law. It's about reconnecting communities. Okay. So finding places, especially we see this in urban settings, where either infrastructure has segregated communities or people don't have a way to connect. So we got $117 million to really enliven an old rail line mm -hmm. um, in Queens, and it'll established 47 acres of park line, seven miles of connected greenway that will join neighborhoods in Queens together, green space, biking, recreation, um, bridges. This much is, like the High Line. Yeah, much like the High Line, so it's the High Line for the boroughs. 93,000 people in the area will benefit, 10 schools will benefit, um, and it's really about bringing safety and community into Queens, and mm -hmm. Queens is one of the boroughs that has the least amount of parkland. Yeah, so let's talk specifics. So there are two specific projects that are going to benefit from this grant, right? S yes. Yeah, well, there's <laughs> yeah. actually two grants. Oh, there's two yes. grants. Yes. So another $5.6 million was awarded for planning on the north and the south end of the BQE. Okay. And this is about, again, reconnecting communities. Mm -hmm. These are communities ripped apart by the Robert Moses Highway. How can we cap over them, add green space, enliven underneath the elevated? And it's especially important for New York City because it's connecting the mayor and the governor. Mm -hmm. um, we went in together on the grant. We were awarded it together. And it's a historic moment because this kind of partnership has evaded New York City and New York State for decades. Mm -hmm. And it's finally come to fruition. It's yeah. huge. And let's talk about how important this is for New York City because everybody in the country applies for these grants pretty much, right? And New York City was awarded. It's very competitive. It's very competitive. It's the first time with the bipartisan infrastructure grant program that we've had this kind of actual focus on connections. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, you know, obviously a lot of interest. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel you know, we had a competitive application and it, it was recognized. Can you also talk about the, the Queensway Public Park that's going to be developed? Absolutely. That's where the $117 million will go. Um, it's 47 acres of parkland. It will create a seven-mile greenway, and it will be a place that's really allowing for parkland to be brightened up and brought to the community. And I think after COVID, we've all realized how important our green space is, especially in New York. Mm -hmm. We live in small areas you know, quarters generally. Mm, yeah. um, we need our green space. It's our vacation space. Mm -hmm. yes. It's where we go when we need to, you know, get new life. It's recreation, it's sports, it's peace, and it's community. Yeah. Um, and it's absolutely integral to our mental and medical and health, you yeah. know. I mean, you look at what the High Line did specifically to the west side mm -hmm. and how it kind of revitalized some of those areas and brought people back outside. Can we talk about timelines though, right? Because you hear about the grant money and then it, it is a long time till fruition, till things come, to, come to fruition. So what's the timeline for the project? Um, so the timeline, it's a multi-year process. Yeah. Um, the, the good part is we get the money and we're on a clock, okay. right? Which is important because the federal government gives out money and expects things to see things at certain times. Um, so that's a really good thing. It keeps us on a cadence. Um, and the truth is that these are big projects. Mm -hmm. And so the first step is you formalize the grant agreement and then you move forward with the bidding and the construction. So it is certainly gonna be a multi-year project. Um, but you know, obviously without this kind of commitment and accountability, it would never come to yeah. life. Yeah. Well, it is a very exciting time for sure. Uh, we want to also ask you on, about something else. And speaking of timelines, we wanted to talk to you about the borough-based borough jails. It's supposed to be done by 2027. That timeline, not looking so optimistic about that right now. Can you talk about where the city stands right now? Because the mayor even saying it doesn't look good. We might not reach 2027. It's looking more like 2029. Where are we then? So another repercussion of COVID is we had a tremendous supply chain disruption and tremendous cost escalation. Mm -hmm. And so many construction contracts were put on hold for almost two years. 
companies didn't know what the future would look like. And the same happened with the borough-based jail program. So really, there was a two-year pause. As a result of that, when you put these large construction projects out to bid, two things happen. The tie lines are extended, and the price has gone up incredibly. So the first contract um, is out. That's for the Brooklyn borough-based jail. That's the first one to be built. And the, the completion date on that is 2029. And the cost on that is billions of dollars more than what was originally uh, thought of when, when this concept came to life. So obviously, any following borough-based jails mm -hmm. are going to have a completion date after 2029. It's a fact of life. The contract's registered with the controller's office. The controller recognizes it. These are not going to get built by 2027. And yeah, what about capacity, though? Capacity is, a, is an issue that has to be dealt with. The capacity now, uh, the borough-based jail system will house about 4,000, and the capacity, current capacity at Rikers, what's taken up is closer to 6,000. So we have about a 2,000 delta. Mm. Um, it would be wonderful if our court system moved quicker and those people could be processed and yeah. we could see that happen. Um, but that's also been another victim of COVID mm. and we haven't seen that happen. So it is a real question mark of how do we ensure the spirit of the program, which is good, humane housing for our detainees, the majority of which are detainees. If we don't have capacity, we won't deliver on that promise. All right. Deputy Mayor Mira Joshi, thank you for coming in to talk about the big announcement today. Yes. Good stuff. Looking forward to seeing it down the line. Excellent. <laughs> Long time down the line. Great but to have you But it's still coming. It's All coming. Right. Thank, thank you. So thank you.